Attention bargain hunters and savvy savers. From fashion to furniture, leisure to luxury, and a wide range of household goods and tech from the biggest names in retail. Don't miss John Pie's online auctions. View, bid, buy. It's as easy as pie. Steph, what's happening, mate? Look, I just picked up uh, a lovely ID4 from Sinclair. I just wondered if you want to go for a spin, mate. Yeah, okay. All right, mate. I'm just finishing up, okay? Pick me up, pal. All right, bud. Till up. All right, mate. What's happening, mate? How are you, pal? You okay? Hey, what's going on? Good, you okay? Yeah, you like my new car? It's lovely, mate. Obviously. What's this, then? Well, that's the ID4, mate, from uh, Port Albert Sinclair. Nice, Just taking it out for a spin. Looking after you, are they? Yeah, nice electric new car, mate. Happy nice days for you. I know you're not busy. I'm always busy, mate. I'm just finishing the gym. What, what, what did you do? A bit of chest, you know? Chest and arms. <laughs> Benadon coming up. I think my first Prem game for Aberavon was Swansea away in St. Helens. I think that's ringing a bell for my first game. But when did you first put that blood and black jersey on? Um, Obviously, it must have been a pre-season friendly. Yeah, you? I think it m might have been a Tata down in Tata. What year? It's got to be 10 years ago, I think, around about that area. No, you're wrong, mate. How many years? Yeah. Well, 2012, so you are a little bit right there, so let's just call that 10 years-ish, I guess. Yeah. But you, the first game was Mosley. Actually, before we get onto your tries, right? How many games do you reckon you've played? For Abraham, and obviously, I know you had a little bit of a spell in uh, <coughs> Earther. Obviously, you knew you went for the love of the game, didn't you? you? You wanted to have some experience playing for different clubs and stuff. It wasn't anything to do with with money at all. No, mate. This, you know, it's all about trying out different things, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you've got to experience different things to see if you like it or not. What's your try to game ra uh, ratio? Uh, I'd hopefully be a oh, sixty. No, not bad, but you, you definitely keep in track, you. It's nice to keep track of the yeah. tries, they don't come out often anymore. 64 tries you've had. Nice mate. 64 tries. What's the most memorable try that you've 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 ever scored for Abraham? Um I think the try against Bridgend, I would say. About must be about six years ago now, I think it, it won the premiership try of the year. I think I caught the ball on the left hand side and ended up scoring in front of the fans on the right hand side. In front of the fans? Yeah. What were they screaming? What were they shouting? Just good fans, but no. Go on, Steph, boy. Go on, Steph, get over there. What about any other tries that you've scored? Any like important ones or um, any, anything that else that sticks out in your mind? I think the year we had to win the stay up or score four tries to stay up, I scored against Kamal and Quinns. So, you know, the atmosphere that day was really special. So it was really nice to get over the, the line that day. Let's talk about the games there, not not just your tries. Like what? Ten years of playing. I know. Again, I know you had a, a spell away, but um, you can narrow it down to a season if you want to. But what what games stick out in your memory, uh, and, and for what reason? Um, I think the Boxing Day derbies. If I'm honest with you, I think they're always special to play against. I've been lucky enough to play in a few. I think the year we put, I think it was 50 on Neath in Abraham and managed uh, a hat trick that day. So. Uh, you know, that's always good, beat the Neath in Abraham and scoring a hat-trick, so it's pretty special. What, um, I'm sure you know, what, because I don't know the answer to this question, but what is the highest amount of tries you've scored in, in, in one season campaign? Um, if I'm honest here, I'm unsure. I, th I think it's around about 15. 15, that's not bad, is it? Yeah, I think I was all right, mate. And what's the lowest you've scored in, in a season? Uh, I think one year I didn't even get to double figures. <laughs> I try and get to double figures every year, but uh, you know, a tough year that year. You got brought up <coughs> and called up into the into the Welsh Sevens camp. Uh, what, what was that like for you? Yeah, it was good. Um, Gareth Williams was coach at the time, and I met with him and Richie Pew in Clan Darcy, and Babs offered me a, a, a full year in the Sevens. And you know, I, I love the game of Sevens. It's open, it's expansive, and you know, it was great to experience the the countries and get my cap and again what was the you know the highlights on those sevens tournaments for you was it just the traveling the rugby you know what let's delve a bit deeper into you know the uh, the, the highlights and the the positives of, of being on that sevens um, circuit yeah i think there was um there was a core of us of about seven or eight so we were really 
close and a great knitted squad to be fair and you know some of the countries you go to we played South Africa in the quarterfinals in Cape Town it was uh, it was pretty special I think it was like 60,000 people and a great atmosphere we lost that one though <laughs> give me a typical day on the sevens tournament uh, on a sevens uh, leg so 12 of you away on a, on a on a typical tournament yeah so obviously you arrive you're quite tired after arriving to the first day or so is is getting used to it and then you know a couple of training sessions you have a day off then where you'll try and keep it quite low-key go for a coffee or go for a walk nothing too crazy and then maybe before you know it you are you're into it but you know people make out to be oh you're traveling the world and it's, it's, it's awesome, but you don't manage to see quite a lot of these great countries. It's just like training grounds. Don't get me wrong, it's a great lifestyle, but you know, it's, it's tough work as well. What's the dynamics then, again, with just 12 people? You're away for like two and a half weeks, aren't you? Yeah, so you, you do two legs at a time. So it's like the first one is Dubai and Cape Town was when I was there, but so you'll go away and after the first tournament then you'll fly straight to the second leg for just over another week before you come home. On that note, how do you find it when you've played rugby with obviously myself, Breezy and Jamie, uh, now coaching you, you know, how, how do you find that yourself as a player, the transition of, hang on a minute, I was just playing rugby with you and now you're telling me kind of, uh, you know how to play rugby, maybe to no, say. No, to be honest, when you um, you know you first come in, you're a bit of a, a joker in the change rooms. I thought, oh, what's this cowboy going to be like as a coach? But oh, right, uh. but now I literally it's really positive. I, I really enjoy the defensive stuff, which I thought they'd never say because it's never one of my strong points. But <laughs> you're a good tackle, bud. You know, <laughs> all right. But you know, if I'm honest with you, I think the, the squad we we've got at the moment, we have got to be challenging for some silverware. I think I've been in Abrava and like you said, nine, ten years now and you know, we've lost in the final to Murtha, but with the squad we got now, fingers crossed we, we will be up there this year. I think if we can all stay fit and, you know, buy into what everyone is doing, I think it's gonna be a massive, massive season for us and you know, there's a few boys who are on the other side of thirty now, so it will be nice to do something. You know, we spoke a weekend about uh you know, Di Beaton, for example, a man who's been at the club for 40 odd years now, it would be nice to do something for people like that, just yeah. to try and win something. Definitely, mate. Right, mate, I'm going to take you to the front for a coffee, but let's. Um, who's going to buy them? Well, Pick rock scissors? Come on, mate. Right, come on, everybody. Yeah. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Dude, it's on me, but. It's on you, but. Yeah. What are you after, mate? Flat white, is it? Yeah, how, how important do you think it is to have players like that coming through the ranks? Um, again, not just for for Aberavon, but but the league in general. I, I think all these players in the academy standard should should be playing week in week out, not like playing once every couple of weeks. I think the league is only going to get better if these boys are playing and these boys are only going to get better themselves if they are playing on a week in week out basis. I think the you know the premiership is such a great league in in Welsh rugby, you know, everyone's watching it it's on S4C as well now which is massive for these guys to make a name for themselves. So and, and you know, as a youngster that's all you want to do is play rugby. So I think the academy should be then these boys play as much as possible. The league, as it stands, you know, for maybe the last six years, has, has changed around different formats. You know, the Welsh Rugby Union are, are trying different things, uh, trying to move with the way direction that rugby's moving. I guess. But what, what, are, what are your views, in, simply, really, of, of how that Premiership, underpinning the regions, if you like, should be, should should look, uh, and, and maybe take a view of what the youngsters, as well, from youth rugby. Uh, what that looks like now? Yeah, so, you know, everyone wants to see a winner at the end of the year, so I think it should be, in my opinion, if you, if you come out right to the top, you know, you take the the medal for winning it, and then, you know, sadly, if you do come in the bottom, 
I think there needs to be a, a promotion in the championship as well where the team does come up. So I, I think it is vitally important and, it, and you know, it keeps you playing all year round if you are fighting for that relegation battle as well. We talk about gaps, bridging the gap between regional and then Prem. Do you actually think there is a gap? I do think it is a big gap in between the Premiership and the pro game at the moment. But you know, you see some of the boys stepping up, like Rowan and Geraint. You know, they they hold in their own, and you know they're doing a great job at representing the Premiership. Tell me what you do in thirty seconds. This is your time. So I've got the um, WIU job in the Ospreys region for the male game. So it's uh, looking after the, the hub officers and all the clubs in the east and all the schools in the east. So making sure there's rugby functioning all the way through from primary, secondary, college, sixth form. Just making sure rugby is uh, on the high in Wales. What, what is your first action then in the new job, rugby development? In, in, in the Ospreys area, what is the, the first go-to? What, what, what needs addressing or what needs looking after, strengthening or, you know? Um, so at the moment there's a lot of hub officers in schools in the Ospreys region, but at the moment I'm just trying to target the non-hub schools, you know, making sure there's rugby being played there for the boys game and, you know, trying to get them to as many festivals as possible and try and make sure they are playing rugby on a weekly basis. Nice, mate. And what is... The long-term aim then with you developing rugby, so let's just take under 15s for example then, five years time, what would you expect with Steph's hard work, with, with a large percentage of these, these players, what, where would you like them to be or what, what type of players I guess would you lo- want them to be? You know, everyone is on a, you know, a different wavelength, if some people want to just play community game or if some people do want to step up, so I think everyone's on a different uh, a platform, but the main issue is we see them transfer into youth rugby, you know, and going into seniors to play at any form of game that they like. So if they're playing for their local club, if they're playing for a championship team, premiership team, or even if they have made that step up to the pro game, it's given them a platform to develop and you know for their careers. Because you you would have seen not you've probably coached a lot of them actually, Lewis Marsh. Uh, the likes of them now that you're actually playing rugby with them in Aberavon obviously Lewis is attached to us as well so uh, what, first of all what's your thoughts on that or two you know, is it a bit strange uh, experiencing that you know when you could see these boys like you know Corey Jenkins Lewis Marsh you know I've done some coaching with the Aberavon school boys with Mike Dyers and Joe Gage and you know you could see these boys were we're going to step up and be good, you know, they're physically strong, you know, Corey's exceptionally quick to be fair. And you could just see these boys, you know, progress in their careers and when you see them come into Aberavon, you know, you they just need to keep playing rugby now and they just need the opportunity to play rugby. So I think at Aberavon is a positive club and they will get that experience. Nice mate. If somebody was to play you in a movie what actor would that be? What actor would, if, if it was a documentary, Netflix documentary tomorrow about Steph Andrews, obviously you can't star in it yourself. Someone's got to play you. Who would you want to play in you? Channing Tatum. <laughs> Why is that like? I don't know, if you asked me this question before and I said Denzel Washington <laughs> and everyone absolutely wrecked me, so I just thought of another actor. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think that weighs up, yeah. <laughs> So Channel, yeah, there must be a couple of reasons. Give me three reasons why you chose Channel Tate to play you. He's a good looking guy, isn't he? Good looking guy, yeah. yeah. One. Something easy, easy gets on with, I bet. <laughs> yeah, third one. Um, you just polish off that coffee. It's lovely, to be fair. <laughs> Richard Ibert has done a good job. Eh? <laughs> nice. Go on, last one. <laughs> um, I don't know, mate. Yeah, so you've lost this. You've just yeah. randomly said Channel Tatum. Yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's all you, I had made with Denzel yeah, that's all Washington. You, you just thought you saw Denzel, you saw Channel Tatum <laughs> in that film when he's stripping off and stuff. You thought, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a bit of me, that is. That's why you can't ask an, answer three questions about why you play you. <laughs> what Marvel character would you be and why? One reason, time this time. Uh, Superman, mate. Superman, why? Just the best, isn't he? What a Superman? What, what, what's what, what's Superman going to offer you? 
and just that, that average guy who can just turn. So not Thor then, where you can just like chuck, get his hammer and just uh, donk people on the head, man. <laughs> <laughs> donk. Well, Steph, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna drop this car back. Thanks for your time. Yeah. I'll see you tight in training. Yeah, nice, mate. Top man. Cheers, mate.